is the Vancouver2010.com vodcast, your window into the Vancouver 2010 Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games. For this video, we took a snapshot of curling. It's far more complex than we can fit into a five-minute podcast, but here's the general idea. Two teams of four compete in ten ends, and in every end, each member of both teams throws two stones, while their team members sweep the ice in front of the stones to control its direction and speed, also known as curl. When an end is complete, the team with the stones closer to the button are able to score points towards an overall tally. There's obviously more to it than this, so we'll let the pros take it from here. I was about four years old when I started curling. Yep. Yeah. What do your friends think when uh, they find out you're a curler? <laughs> it's a little different because uh, you know, most of my buddies are hockey players and uh, you know they they don't know much about the sport, but uh, you know they've seen we've had some success with it, and I think uh, they think that's pretty cool. What's the most fun you've had while curling? Uh, definitely winning the Canadian Championship. You know it's pretty exciting, and uh, we we're all all real happy to win, and you know it's definitely a highlight of our our career. Hi, my name is Kyla Denistruk and I'm the sport coordinator for the 2010 Vancouver Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about curling. I competed for Manitoba twice at the Canadian Junior Nationals, once in 1997 and once in 1999. So the two black items that look a bit like a starter's block in running that the athletes will use to start their curling delivery when they're delivering the stone. Um, there are two of them because a right-hander will curl out of the one on one side and a left-hander will curl out of one on the other side. The stones that we use uh, here for the Olympic Winter Games are the handles that have an electric sensor in them. So you'll see the handle has a silver coating on it and there are two lights on the front of the stone. The other side of the electric sensor is placed inside the hog line, it's frozen in the ice. If the athlete releases the stone cleanly prior to the hog line, the light will turn green. If the stone touches the hog line, the light will turn red and the stone will be removed from play. Two ways to make a stone curl in curling, an in-turn and an out-turn. For a right-handed curler, an in-turn is clockwise and an out-turn is counterclockwise. And you'll see them slide out of the hack and as they get closer to the hog line, which is the thick black line just on the other side of the house, they will turn the rock either clockwise or counterclockwise um, the direction that they want it to curl. We often get questions about why there's so much yelling and curling. It's just a, a, the way for athletes to encourage each other to sweep harder or less, um, depending on if they want the stone to go straighter or if they want it to curl more. The green circle is the 12 foot, the white circle is the 8 foot, the blue is the 4 foot, and the center is the button. Ultimately, the stones at the end of each end, which is like an inning in baseball, closest to the center um, prior to one of the other team's colored stones being there are the points that count. I'm George Carries. I competed for Canada in the 1998 Olympic Winter Games curling competition in Nagano, Japan. Curling is a sport of hundreds of pounds of granite rocks, precision, team bonding, uh, strategy, strategy out the max actually, extreme patience and a surprising amount of athleticism as well. Curling is great because it's a sport for all. At the high performance level, like we see at the Olympic Winter Games, for example, these are full-time, fully funded athletes who are curling all the time, just like in pro sports. Well, a lot of people who don't know much about curling think that we're actually throwing rocks on the ice surface, but we're throwing rocks on little, tiny, microscopic, frozen droplets of water that are frozen onto the surface of the ice. That's called pebble. And that is what gets shaved off with each rock or each foot and each brush during a game. And that is what we actually curl on. So if you've got a really good ice technician who's now in this day and age got all these computers helping him out finding the exact correct water temperature for the pebble which goes onto this perfectly immaculate ice surface and the rocks are good and they've been tested again electronically then you've got primo conditions.
For more information on curling or the 2010 Winter Games, go to Vancouver2010.com.